slowly coming to an end, slowly. right? Slowly. really doesn't wrap up until June. Or I wish it never wrapped it. up, but it is coming to an end, and there were a couple good games today. Good. Sonics against the Rockets. Sounds more like a Star Wars affair. But as the NBA regular season nears an end, Houston and Seattle were out to prove today who is the best of the Western Conference. To the action, the Sonics looking good early, inside, but then back out to Gary Payton. Who? There it is. Sonics looking good as they led by nine early in the fourth quarter. But the Rockets come back. Vernon Maxwell with a nice three-pointer of his own. Sonics still up by six. You couldn't stop this guy, Gary Payton, the wheel. The deal, the fadeaway, the bucket. Sonics win it 100 to 97. They are now 60 and 18. That's the best record in the NBA. Well, speaking of the NBA, Magic Johnson will not be coaching the Lakers next season. A decision that uh, I'm comfortable with my life, my lifestyle. I um, I take losses too hard. I hurt. Um, I take it home with me. To baseball now, and the Houston Astros are off to a decent start at 6-4. and four. Could they win another one today against the Mets in New York? Early on, Todd Hundley with the rip to the wall. Two runs would come in, Joe Orsalak and David Segui, and it was 2 nothing Mets. Then Dwight Gooden looks like his old form. What a star he used to be. He's coming around this year. The Mets win it 9-1. to one. Well, to the best team in the majors right now, the Braves against the Cubs. The fans on the rooftop watching the game. Hey! You don't have to pay to watch there. you got to love that. The rip to the wall. Watch Deion Sanders. What an athlete he is. Look out for the wall, Deion. Good catch. He wasn't hurt. He would be okay. And in the seventh, that guy who had a no-hitter the other night with the whiff gets Willie Wilson to strike out. Braves win it 4-1. to one. The Braves are now 11-1, and one, and that is the best in the major leagues. Well, the McNeese Cowboys are playing a critical doubleheader today at Stephen F. Austin. The first game started just about an hour ago. As you see, we do not have an updated score. The Cowboys currently stand in fourth place in the Southland Conference and need to pick up some conference wins to move up. We will obviously update these scores for you for Nightcast. To football now, and Warren Moon was given his new Minnesota Vikings uniform by head coach Dennis Green. How does he feel about his new team? I'm excited about the opportunity of playing with him and, and uh, being his quarterback and being the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. So, it's, again, it's a pleasure to be here. My family's excited about the opportunity because my, my wife looks at it as a, a new start for, for me, uh, a place where I'm wanted. I guess the Vikings don't feel that Warren is uh, too old to still quarterback. Well, switching gears a bit, don't forget about tonight's final night of the McNeese Intercollegiate Rodeo out at Burton Ag Arena. Check out that cow. John, would you ever get on that? Dude? Look at that. That's out of control. All rodeo events will take place tonight at 7.30 p.m. And what type of action should we see? Tonight, I think we're going to see the top ten in each event. Um, you're going to see the best of the best for the, the weekend and some of the best in the region. Um, it ought to be a good rodeo. And anything specific we should look for on, on Saturday night? Uh, me and the cap open. <laughs> hmm. Plays of the week. Roll them. Check out the shot by Lanny Watkins. This, the second shot, 240 yards away. Oh, no. Oh, no. Bingo, bottom of the cup. What a shot by Lanny. Now, Derek Coleman, you know he's hungry. What does he do? Takes a bite out of the ref. Derek, you can't do that. You should be throwing out a ball game, fella. Otis Thorpe. Watch this, he goes in for the dunk, he misses, but he wants a piggyback from Dikembe Mutombo. He would get that, Akeem Olajuwon would shoot the shot anyway and make the bucket. Yes, they counted the bucket. Now, don't park your car there! Oh, folks, no one was injured in that. That is why we showed you the video. Now, tell us Frank of the Timberwolves with a leap and lean off the board. Ron Harper? Oh. How pretty was that glide? Man of the air. No, not Michael Jordan. And yes, even the coach can't believe he made that shot. A little shake, shake. Oh, come on. Words can't describe that. What are they doing, John? John, what's up with that? Anyway, John, plays of the week. We love to roll that video. Last time, watch this. 
Up the court goes David Robinson. Looks like a point guard and the slam. David Robinson, possibly the player of the year in the NBA this year. We'll have to wait and see on that. Good games coming up as uh, we move towards the, uh, the final weekend. And what will Magic do after this year? Maybe he'll play baseball like that, Jordan. That's yeah, what you were saying, right? That's what I figured. We'll see what happens. Why not? Next on 7 News, we'll take you to... Local boy against uh, the Rangers tonight, Yes, huh? yes. Uh, ben McDonald used to pitch at LSU, and right. uh, what an athlete. Uh, rumor about him, he loves a crawfish, but he can't get him up there in Baltimore. Nah, what's probably he, not. What's he going to do? nasty Chinese crawfish, probably. <laughs> Check you out. Okay, so how good is baseball in the state of Louisiana? Well, the McNeese Cowboys won their conference last year. The LSU Tigers are becoming accustomed to winning national championships. Championships, excuse me. And there are an array of major leaguers who play their collegiate ball in our state. One such player is Baltimore Orioles pitcher Ben McDonald, who went up against the Texas Rangers this evening. To the action we would go. There's George W. Bush III checking it out. Check out the real hat trick. Mickey Hatcher. Nice grab, Mickey. Later, the rip. But check out the beautiful catch by David Hulse. Oh, was that sweet? Got to see that one more time in slow-mo. Beautiful. Then it was time for Ben McDonald to try to show his stuff, but guess what? Boom! Get out of here! The two-run home run by Hope. Zay Conseco made the score two to nothing Rangers, and then guess what? Will Clark, he played high school ball in New Orleans. He rips a shot off of Ben McDonald. Now it is three to one Rangers in the seventh inning. That score in the seventh inning. To the Astros and the Mets. In the second, Todd Hundley, the rip to the wall. Joe Orsalak and David Segui would come around to score. Two nothing Mets. Then later, Dwight Gooden showing his old form. The whiff. Mets win it nine to one. Well, to the best team in the majors right now, the Braves against the Cubs. That's the way you do it. You don't pay. You sit outside on the wall. Early on, there's the shot by Sean Dunstan, but look at Dion Neon Sanders. Look out for the wall. He was okay. He did get the out. And they were looking strong in the seventh. Kent Merker. See you, Willie Wilson. Braves win it 4-1. to one. The Braves are now 11-1. That is the best in the major leagues. Well, the McNeese Cowboys tried to play a doubleheader today at Stephen F. Austin. And there you see what happened. The first game was rained out. But in the second game, the Cowboys rocked 19-5. They hit a school record seven home runs. Ryan Robertson hit three home runs. He inc included in those three home runs, he hit a grand slam. Now the Pokes will play two games tomorrow, beginning at 1 p.m. at Stephen F. Austin. The LSU Tigers did pretty well today, taking two games from Mississippi. There you see the finals 5-4, and in the second game, 5-2. Well, to the NBA, and a couple good games to show you as the competition is heating up as the end of the regular season is drawing near. To the Alamo Dome for the Suns and the Spurs, the game seen right here on KPLC. Early on, David Robinson, the layup and the foul. Robinson was on fire. Check out John Lucas going nuts. Loving life and living large. Then Charles Barkley, he's going to respond with a three-pointer of his own. Hoop, there it is. Now, late, oh, look at that cutaway. The Suns by two, the Spurs with a chance to tie. Oh, Willie Anderson misses the chippy. The Suns win it. 96 to 94 to the Rockets and the Sonics. And early on, the Sonics on the break up to Sean Kemp for the windmill slam. Sean had 22 points. The Rockets respond the alley oop to Akeem Olajuwon, one handed slam. He had 31 points. Sean Kemp was just too much, though, here. The fast break up ahead to Sean. Basically, we call him the man child. Hey, he could be up for MVP honors. You never know. Later, another fast break slam. The Sonics win it. 100 to 97. They now have 60 wins on the season. That is the best in the NBA. 37 years old. Doesn't seem that old to me. But to the Houston Oilers, it was old enough to send veteran quarterback Warren Moon to the Minnesota Vikings. And today, Moon was given his new jersey by Vikings head coach Dennis Green. And you know, Warren seems to be pretty pleased with the move. I'm excited about the opportunity of playing with him and and uh, being his quarterback and being the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. So, it's, again, it's a pleasure to be here. My family's excited about the opportunity because my, my wife looks at it as a, a new start for, for me, uh, a place where I'm wanted. To golf and the PGA Heritage at Hilton Head, South 
Carolina, we would go. The final day would be tomorrow. That shot looks beautiful. On the 11th, Russ Cochran, the birdie putt to go 13 under. Bingo, bottom of the cup. On the 15th, the shot of the day, Hale Irwin for the birdie. Shh. Oh. Bingo, bottom of the cup. Hale Irwin leads now at 15 under. He has the best ever three rounds in that tournament with a 198. And John, a couple notes to pass along. The McNeese Cowgirls softball team had four games today in a tournament in Chattanooga, wow. Tennessee. A lot of games. They split winning two and losing two. They play tomorrow at 8 a.m. We'll tell you how they did tomorrow. But how about the Cowboys? 19 to 5. Not bad. A cream, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Sure. Well, Southwest Louisiana has its back. Corey, the McNeese Cowboys uh, baseball up at Stephen F. Austin. Yep. Uh, rained out first game yesterday. Right, so they had to play a doubleheader today. Yeah. It was a critical game because they're making a run to try to get to that conference tournament. And, ugh, John. Not that so how important was the Cowboys doubleheader today at Stephen F. Austin? Well, with the Cowboys coming into the games in fourth place in the conference and needing at least a fourth place finish in the regular season to advance to the conference tournament, the doubleheader could be considered critical. And unfortunately, they dropped both games two to one. The loss puts the Pokes at eight and six in the conference, and they are now tied for fourth place. An unfortunate turn of events after the Pokes blasted the Lumberjacks yesterday 19 to five and hit a school record seven home runs. The Cowboys will next travel to Centenary for a 6 p.m. game on Tuesday. Well, the Cowgirls were in action today in the Frost Cutlery Tournament in Tennessee against Georgia State. There you see the final. It was two to two, a tie. The Cowgirls play Nickel State at Cowgirl Diamond in a doubleheader Tuesday at 2 o'clock. And if they win both of those games, folks, they will win the Southland Conference. You've got to come out and see the Cowgirls on Tuesday at 2 o'clock, Cowgirl Diamond. Well, moving along, the LSU Tigers continue to roll along in the SEC as they upended Ole Miss today 3-2. to two. Kevin Ainsworth hit a solo home run in the bottom of the eighth to win it. The Tigers are now 9-2 and two in the SEC. Well, to the majors now, and Nolan Ryan is retired, but with the addition of Will Clark from San Francisco, the Rangers were hoping for a better than 3-6 and six start this season. And how would they do tonight against the Orioles? Well, not so good early on. Sid Fernandez, formerly of the Mets, the whiff of Dean Palmer. And then Chris Zabo steps to the plate, and he's going to knock the first home run to left field in New Arlington Stadium. It was 2-0 Orioles at that point. As we speak right now, it is 4-1 Orioles in the eighth inning. Well, to the Astros and the Mets at Shea Stadium. In the fourth, Jeff Bagwell, boo! Get out of here! The solo home run to make it 2-1 Astros. But then, Jeff Kent would come back strong for the Mets. Yes, out of the yard, the two-run home run that was. The Mets win that ball game 4-2. Well, to the Atlanta Braves, who are absolutely on fire. Oh, a little lounging out. Beautiful day, get a tan. Then, early on, the rip, Terry Pendleton up the middle to Sean Dunstan. Nice play. The throw over to third. Steve Bouchelle is going to grab it, but the throw home is not going to be in time to get Fred McGriff, who's sliding and is safe for one Braves. And hey, hello, we'll have a ball. We have a ball game going on. Uh-oh, we already showed it. We're not showing it again. Greg McMichael then steps in, gets the strikeout of Rick Wilkins. Braves win it 4-2. to two. The Braves are now 12-1. That is the best in the major leagues. Well, there are a couple great plays from today's action. Let's show them to you. This courtesy KTVU, the Marlins and Giants. Barry Bonds against the wall, preserving the 9-8 Giants win. Then, in the Royals-Indians game, courtesy KSMO-TV, Kenny Lofton, the rip to left. Oh, the sprawling catch by Vince Coleman. That's worth another look. JB, look at that. Can you do that? I don't think you can. Neither can I. Royals win it 8-3. to three. Well, trying to four-peat is what the Chicago Bulls are doing. And today they ran into the colossal one himself, Shaquille O'Neal and the Orlando Magic. To the arena, the game seen right here on KPLC, the matchup with Scottie Pippen against the Love Shack. There, Scottie gets the soft J. He had 34 points. But you can't stop Shaq. Look at the slam. Then check out the drop step. Oh, right by Luke Longley for two. Then Dennis Scott, the no-look dish. Oh, for the slam. Shaq Daddy looking strong. Then Scott Skiles inside to Shaq. Scott Williams, your no contest. Then Magic on the break. You've got to say, Anthony Hardaway, possibly rookie of the year. Watch this move. Don't get in his way, folks. Magic win it 118 to 101. Shaquille O'Neal scored 32 points. Finally, tonight we go to golf. And the saying from the PGA tournament, PGA Heritage Tournament, 
is Hale Irwin. To the action. Look at this putt by Lauren Roberts. And somebody's got a bird's eye view. That put Lauren Roberts at 14 under. To the 16th, the shot of the day. Hale Irwin, incredible approach on the 16th hole. Oh, no. Oh, no. Beautiful shot. Hale Irwin wins it at 18 under. Greg Norman second at 16 under. Lauren Roberts 15 under. And Willie Wood, formerly of Lake Charles, he wins over $9,000 in this tournament and finishes at three under. JB, one last score from baseball, Southern Miss. Beats Tulane 14 to 1. And folks, get out to Cowgirl Diamond 2 p.m. on Tuesday. If the Cowgirls beat Nickel State in that doubleheader, they win the Southland Conference. Key game. Key game. Okay, thank you, Court. Sure. Next on Nightcast, Bonnie's got your uh, wake up. Hi, I'm Corey Kessler. You know, coming to the Children's Museum really brings out the kid in me. And right now, during our membership drive, you can come all year for a special low price. It's a great deal for kids and adults. Pick up a membership form right here at the museum or at KPLC. Then choose the membership that's best for you. You'll get lots of cool stuff, and it's a fun place to learn. Call the Children's Museum of Lake Charles today. Join for the kids and the kid in you. Marty and I were just discussing our strategy for the Contraband Tennis Celebrity Match. And we'd like to invite you to come out and watch our grudge match against the executives of First National Bank. Game time is Friday, May 6th at 12 noon. The place? The Lake Charles Racquet Club. So come out for the grudge match of the century, brought to you by First National Bank and 7 at your service, KPLC. This year, we're ready to rumble. Well, the Louisiana Associated Broadcast, uh, Associated Press Broadcasters Group held its annual awards banquet earlier tonight in Shreveport. News awards based on coverage during 1993 were handed out. KPLC was a winner in several categories. KPLC's Vicki Zimmerman took first place in the Best of Show category. Her program Live at Five on the Road in Cameron Parish took the top award. It featured Welcome stories and interviews Parish. on the We've people in Cameron Parish. And our own Corey Kessler took first place in the sports story section. Corey's sports challenge with Trudy Waite called Nanny Slamming, that was on goat tying, was a favorite the among the judges. Looked like uh, maybe the goat should have gotten an award in that one. In the radio division, KYKZ's Carol Collins took first place in the spot news category. Well, coming up next in sports, Corey will tell us about the Saints' latest move, and it may surprise you. And he'll have highlights from McNeese's doubleheader with Northeast. The Goat Slamming Man is with us tonight. Look at you too, man. Bingo, bottom of the goat. Did, yeah. did you like that? Congratulations. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Stay had away a, from the bottom of the goat. I yeah. had a good time. I need some good sports challenges. Give me a call, would you? Okay. Uh, let's go to some yeah. baseball. We got a lot of baseball to cover. The boys are back. The McNeese baseball team did exactly what they needed to do this afternoon by knocking off the Indians from Northeast and putting themselves back in the hunt for a spot in the conference tournament. To the action of Cowboy Diamond fans enjoying the afternoon. Hey, they're styling and profiling. Gotta love that. Bottom of the first, Darren Hofstetter, the RBI single. That's gonna score Kurt Lowry. And hey, the Cowboys were up one nil. Then, Damon Rapp up to bat. He's gonna rip the short shot. He's gonna be out at first, but in comes Clint Gould. That was Chris Adcox, by the way. That was not Damon Rapp. Clint Gould scores 2-0 Cowboys. Cowboys win the first ball game 2-1 as Bob Howry pitched a six-hitter. And there you see the score from the second game. The Polks pull that one out as well, 4-0. So they're now in third place in the Southland Conference and will face Northeast tomorrow at 1 p.m. at Cowboy Diamond. Come on out and support the Cowboys. Well, the LSU Tigers are cruising along as they took two from visiting Arkansas today at Alex Box Stadium. There you see the finals, 11 to three and 16 to four. Well, to the majors now, and things have not started well for the Texas Rangers as they have gotten off to a subpar five and nine record. And tonight they look to change all that as they went up against the Indians. Would their fortunes change this evening? Yes, they would, folks, the rip up the middle. Manny Lee with the nice stop over to first. Carlos Baerga would score, though, and the Indians were on top. Then Will Clark, he's out of New Orleans. Boom! Not out of here, though, folks. Fooled you on that one. Watch the play at the wall. Nope, didn't catch it. Almost got it. 
One run comes around to score, but look at the effort at the wall. That is sweet. Oh, shaky video, but still got to see that play. Then the rip to right. Watch former LSU star Albert Bell. He's got it. Little leaguers can do that, Albert. Anyway, the Rangers lead 9-6 to six in the sixth Albert inning. That is in the sixth in the inning. Jets to the Astros the and the Cardinals. The runner's going. Terry McGriff nails Finley at second base. Wouldn't matter, though. Scott surveys the rip to right. One run comes in. The Astros take the lead. Then the Cardinals come back, though. Todd Zill, boom! Get out of the yard, baby. It's gone as the Cards are right back in it. But the Astros would fight back. The RBI single. It's going to score Craig Biggio as we are right now. Astros lead that game by a whopping 13 to 5 in the seventh inning. Well, to the Red Sox and the Angels. Bottom of the fifth, Mo Vaughn, the sack fly to center. Check out this play at the plate. Mike Greenwell, he's not scared. Get out of the way, catcher. Oh, take that. 5 3 socks. It's worth another look. Oh, these guys are tough. Who said it won the contact sport? Then check out the nice catch by Tim Nehring. Oh, beautiful. Then Jeff Russell's going to strike out Bo Jackson. And the Red Sox win it 5 to 3. The Red Sox have won five straight games. Well, to the Braves and the Pirates. Jim Leela looking on. He remembers those days when the Braves beat him in the championship series. Kevin Young, the hit to right. Dave Justice, beautiful play, Dave, for the out. Top of the ninth, it's one off. That's when the Pirates pour it on. The single up the middle, 2-1 Pittsburgh. Then Andy Van Slyke's going to step up to the plate. He's going to rip one to left center. Pittsburgh wins that ball game 6-1. to one. Well, to the NFL now, and guess who the Saints cut today? No, not Morton Anderson, and not last year's starter Wade Wilson, but Steve Walsh, according to team spokesman Neil Gulkus, Walsh asked to be released to give him time to shop his services around the league. Walsh was acquired from the Cowboys in 1990. Well, as we know, the NFL draft is tomorrow, and besides All-American linebacker Terry Irving, there isn't much chance of any other McNeese football player being chosen in this year's draft. But for some of those who do have a slim chance, it won't make or break them if they're selected tomorrow. I, don't, I say I expect it. I would like it. You know, expect the worst and hope for the best is what I'm trying to do. I'm getting everything in perspective. I'm graduating in May, so if I don't get a phone call, I'm still going to go get a job somewhere. If I'm not drafted, you know, it's not going to hurt me or anything. Uh, you know, most people live to be, you know, go to college and play. I, I live my dream so far. I got to play college ball. Uh,